and hello for episode four of Night in the Woods. Yeah, yeah. It's always that same boot. Of course, she keeps throwing it in the same spot. I'm guessing the floor is really cold. Yeah, not really sure about the tin foil thing. And ah, uh, yes. Casey's instant messenger um, icon there, which it doesn't explicitly say it's Casey's, but um, you kind of figure it out um, through things. And yeah, May is certainly right about that whole like small town kind of thing. Um, I, I, I've never put anyone into a hospital, thank goodness, but at the same time it's that sort of like, oh god, yeah, where I grew up, where everyone knows what I did, even if they, you know, don't. Um, although I imagine Possum Springs is a small enough town that, uh, yeah, word would probably get around pretty fast. Um, but, uh, let's see. Ah, yes, eels, Mom. Eels. And not much going on here at the very moment. Yep. I think that updates like every time there's a part change, but um, yeah, I'm not really too terribly sure. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure if uh, Molly was standing underneath there. But I don't think she really even notices you when you're, you know, wandering on the power lines. Um, yeah, Ham Panther, which seems to be the um, sort of direct uh, analogy for, you know, Walmart. And then we've got... Uh, I'm guessing this is the um, Possum Springs Chamber of Commerce, um, but it could also just be like the town council in general or something like that, but uh, yeah, uh, the first couple of times I played this game I thought those were definitely all people who were in the cult because they're all about, you know, trying to improve uh, um, Possum Springs, as well as get rid of ne'er do wells and the like. But, you know, in the Weird Autumn um, ending, uh, you get to see them, uh, you know, uh, hanging around after the incident. So, um, I guess they're not. And here I miss the ability to talk to this guy, but finally get uh, into it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you get this, um, you know, line here about, you know, vampires and then kind of moves it over to the government, which um, it's kind of funny considering i um, pretty sure this guy is working for the government, so um, I mean, I guess everyone complains about their jobs. But yeah, no, uh, Everyone talking about Dr. Hank, who also gave May her journal and quote-unquote treated her for her anger issues. Um, 
and told her to essentially just repress it at all costs, which isn't healthy, obviously. But, um, yeah, you're given this idea that he's a small-town doctor who um, is highly overworked and underqualified. He's doing his best, but, yeah, no, I think he's, uh, he, he's definitely, uh, a little in out of his league. But it's all that Possum Springs has, unfortunately. Ah, yes. The wonders of professional sports bar, or ball who, uh, yeah, it, it, it's sort of like, you know, still watching cartoons. It's just the cartoons now. Well, I guess cartoons usually last about four hours and have just as many commercials. So, yeah, I guess nothing's really changed except for the fact that it's theoretically less scripted. Yeah... I think Greg really, really, really missed May, uh, which is kind of, you know, endearing and sad at the same time. Um, you kind of get this feeling that uh, outside of, you know, Angus and May, Greg doesn't really have that many friends. And here we get to meet Wags, who's kind of uh, somewhat n new. I mean, he was definitely in before the uh, uh, Weird Autumn update, but I have a feeling that these um, uniquely sprited but otherwise um, <sighs> plot worthless characters are like Kickstarter backwards, backers, which would make sense. Um, just as like random people who, you know, have lines of dialogue with the main character. One second. Uh, autumn, where noses are forever stopped up. Yay. Um. And yeah, so essentially we've got uh, an old time uh, town that's too far away from anywhere that, um, you know, the not only uh, cell reception does not go to, which I've been to a place not far from here that there is like zero cell reception, and it's just like, wow, it's 2018, um, but also far enough away that even high-speed internet is not really much of a thing. Um, I mean, I'm guessing there's probably DSL, but, uh, yeah, no, you know, cable internet or anything like that. So, no streaming for most people. And thus, our first time into the old pickaxe. And yes, we get to meet Bill, who's kind of a background character. We get to see him a lot, but I think this is the only time he actually has... Well, no, he has lines for the play. Um, and also, for a moment, I thought he was possibly Creek, who... Uh, is, I guess someone that we never see, but he's a terrible person 
who apparently has been uh, looking to get with B since she was like 14, which is kind of creepy. But um, you also, in that conversation that we hear in B's storyline, you kind of get this feeling that eh, I think he's, you know, now taking physical advantage of B. Santello uh, in order for him to remain with this job and she can't fire him because she needs to, you know, have actual employees. So she's kind of put into, you know, a desk in a hard place. Um, there's a lot in this game that you can look at and it's like super dark. Um, I try not to look at things really dark, but at the same time, it's like, eh, this game is definitely pointing me towards that direction. Um, yeah, at this point I realized that, oh yeah, Molly is supposed to be standing in front of uh, May's house, so I'm going to have May get up onto the telephone poles from this angle and maybe... Uh, Molly will address the fact that May is doing something illegal. Turns out she doesn't. <laughs> um, yeah, there were a lot of people who... Um, you know, on the first renditions of this game, thought that Molly was um, part of the death cult, but uh, I didn't quite see it. Um, in fact, based off of this dialogue, I always kind of figured that Molly was someone who mm, didn't know about the death cult, but she had, um, she's been cleaning up after it for a long time and not like voluntarily just like oh there's another body guess I have to like you know look for clues and you know all this kind of stuff so Molly's looking at everyone like well they might be another victim or they might you know kill people um so Molly's just like yeah just try not to uh, get killed, please, because obviously May isn't a suspect because she just came back. Um, and yes, tacos with the family is awesome, and the family that tacos together, rocos together. I agree with Stan, even though his family has turned against him. And I'll also admit, not much of a sour cream on, uh, tacos person. I don't know. Not much of a sour cream person at all. Yep, more tin foil. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, that's not the reason why I never was big onto the May and B. It's like, B really isn't too happy with May. <laughs> And rightfully so. And yeah, we see that May has incredibly low self esteem at this point, where she tries to laugh it off, but, you know, every time you see another one of these pop-ups, it's her brain telling her, nope, you're a terrible person, which, you know, I can totally get behind because that feels like me most of the time. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure some of you have, uh, listening to this, have probably seen BoJack Horseman at some point, and yeah, the piece of shit monologue that that's pretty much going in on in my head like most of the day it's never fun 
And yeah, I can totally agree with May's sort of ambivalence towards prom. I'm sure she was like me, where it's like, hey, yeah, um, you know, prom is something I should be doing as a high schooler. And yeah, it was a disappointment. Also, I would love to see whatever game that May is referring to right now. I'm guessing it's some sort of like, you know, Double Dragon type game. Um, but it sounds like it's fun. I could use a luck machine. I would really like a luck machine. Um, one of the many times we get to see uh, V in her car, and because her model always has her looking to the side, because that's 90% of how you know, her, her interactions go, it just seems almost hilarious in this case that she's looking in one way and driving out of peeking out of the corner of her eye. Maybe it's the fact that um, if she looked dead on, her snout would be, uh, you know, pushing against the windshield. I guess that makes sense. That actually makes a heck of a lot of sense. Also, hmm... Yeah, B is definitely a crocodile and not an alligator because her uh, mouth is kind of small and narrow. If she was an alligator, it'd be more of a hump. And ah, yes, Cole, who doesn't get much to do in this, although he is certainly the prime antagonist. At least for this small section right here. Um, and yeah, totally, totally get May's plight. You know, the times where you said the wrong thing to the wrong person or, um, you know, ended a relationship with a person for no reason except for the fact that, you know, you just didn't mesh well. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff is, uh, stuff that haunts you. At least it haunts me every time I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason I really kind of, you know, like this game and feel that it, uh, you know, speaks to me. So, yes. Here we have May getting drunk in the woods, which is probably not the best thing, but hey, you know, I, I guess if it's, uh, if it's a night, <laughs> and there we have Jackie, who we won't really see much in this playthrough, but, um, she's definitely interesting, um, She's supposed to be a, dra or a transgender character, although we don't uh, ever really get a lot of information about that. Um, we know that she went to high school with uh, May and B, which means that uh, she definitely was not one the only uh, LGBTQ plus person at that high school. Um, <laughs> But also at the same time, uh, you know, I, I couldn't see Greg or Angus or even Jackie. Well, maybe Jackie would probably be at the Alphabet Soup um, club at high school. But Greg, I don't think would... Uh, uh, he doesn't socialize too well, it doesn't seem, and Angus, I kind of have a feeling, was pretty in the closet until he, you know, finally was able to get away from his folks, because um, we kind of learned that his folks uh, abused him a lot as a kid, which is also kind of terrible. 
Yeah, you feel really sad about, you know, Angus. Yeah, I don't think uh, Cole really understands what's going on. Then again, I don't think most people are understanding what's going on. May is just desperately trying to, uh, you know, not go crazy. But she's well over that hump. So she's now had four beers by this point. And now, yeah, sloshed. Ah, uh, yes, May, who, well, I guess would not be considered, you know, devil may care, but, uh, since no one put much, uh, faith in her, aside from her parents, I guess she just never really, uh, saw herself as needing to take too much responsibility. <laughs> ah, yes, the porn log. And, unfortunately, Angus is not quite getting the inside joke. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh... Greg is feeling a little uncomfortable, and this kind of revelation, I think, also sort of makes uh, everyone just a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I I'd like to think that Stan Borowski had never, like, actually hit um, May or Candy, but I think he was probably very loud and belligerent. Um, and... Uh, Luckily, it seems like uh, probably the 12-step program or something like that managed to uh, help him out, which is a good thing. And finally, gets Cole gets the uh, nerve to talk to May. And yes, Coolio. Oh, God. Well, I guess apparently that rapper exists in... Uh, the Night in the World Woods universe. Um, it is interesting trying to figure out what of history managed to, uh, like, <sighs> diverge from our own world, because it seems like, well, this is definitely the United States. The states seem to be the same. There is a Russia. Um, but uh, it seems like the predominant religion is different um, and these are all definitely uh, animal people at least according to you know the creators of the game these aren't like allegories for humans they're supposed to be covered in fur and scales and feathers new nickname indeed Writing sex and having papers with each other, indeed. And thus, Trash Mammal, and earlier we had Cave Beast, so, yeah, no one wants to say man or woman or stuff like that in this game. Which I guess makes sense. And yeah, there that goes.
tacos indeed. Um, yeah, this drive sequence, I really like the fact that you're given exceptionally, like, overly intelligent responses than what May would ever give, but, uh, yeah, this is like the, what she would want to say and what actually is processed through May's drunken brain, which is fascinating to, uh, you know, kind of look at. <laughs> and it translates so well. And yeah, the thing that pushed B into essentially forcing to grow up almost immediately is the death of her mother, which, you know, she managed to still graduate as valedictorian apparently, but because, yeah, she had to immediately become mother and father essentially of the household and run the business and the house and all of that yeah uh, she's feeling particularly you know destroyed and everything she wanted in her future is gone which is sad Yeah, so B merely just tries to make her way through everything. And at this point we get to the first dream, which is uh, the only one that doesn't have any sort of musical aspect of it, aside from, uh, you know, a cool soundtrack that goes on in the background. Uh, But you get to see May with the bat, which, um, you know, a lot of people attribute, uh, like when they do fan art of, uh, May Borowski, they typically, um, hand her a bat, but aside from this dream and, uh, you know, uh, a few other moments, which are, uh, the boiler room and um, batting lights away from uh, well, no, I mean it, it shows up a few times in both B's and Greg's um, you know, story arcs but overall the yeah, the bat really doesn't play much of a uh, sort of a role in May's um, current life uh, growing up, yeah, the bat has incredible amounts of, uh, symbolism. I mean, it's what she used to, uh, you know, uh, put that kid into the hospital with, so you would think she would have a bit of an aversion to it, uh. Um, also I've noticed this sequence here seems to be a little bit different than before, because the first couple of times I played this, it seemed like while she was destroying the statue, it would eventually sort of like, you know, destroy and envelop her, but at this point, she is pretty much able to, uh, you know, defeat the monster. But that's another day of Night in the Woods. <laughs> 